so I think I am the compound of all of these experiences and I love that because it's hard because sometimes that means I don't belong I don't feel like I belong anywhere but that also means I belong everywhere Hi Tina. Hi. Thanks for uh, coming out here in this beautiful afternoon to have a conversation with me. For sure. How are you? Good, great. Great. Can you give me some quick ideas about yourself? Yes, so I'm Tina. I grew up in Beirut. Uh, I lived here for my first 18 years and then I moved to Canada to study but also because um, it was never really an option to stay here. Especially as a, as a woman, though not many people will agree. Um, I studied computer science and fine arts. I've always been um, an activist and a very creative person. And now I think most of my time is spent uh, fighting for freedom of speech, fighting against violence against um, gender-based violence, um, and trying to create meaningful artistic experiences. Yeah. So you were, you were raised here until you were 18? Yeah and then you moved to Canada. Yeah. And you have lived in Canada for about a decade now? Yeah, it's almost been a decade. Okay. Yeah. So, do you identify yourself as Lebanese, uh, Lebanese and Canadian? So, uh, what I mean by that would be typical Lebanese element and the, also the Canadian element are both integral parts of your being as you really regard yourself. Uh, yeah, so you're asking me a question of identity. I do, I identify with both, but I, I also, I, it's, it's, a, it's a complex question because as a Lebanese uh, woman, I was raised Christian and I was raised Francophone in a French secular school. So I was always in between subcultures anyway, always belonging to a minority within a minority. And so I never really got a chance to really understand my identity here and I left way too young. Um, and once I got to Canada, I also didn't know what to identify it with uh, because a lot of my education was French, more French than Lebanese. Um, though my parents are not French, they're absolutely Lebanese, they've lived the war here. Um, and so I've always been in between countries and while I love Canada, I, I think my identity is really part of it <laughs> So my identity is definitely the compound of all of these different experiences and I can't just tell you yes I identify with you know classical Lebanese tropes or classical Canadian tropes because that doesn't quite work right and I think that's identity is complex that way especially in a country like this one um, where it's pretty tribal it's very political it's it's it has a lot of history behind it um, and even more so as an immigrant, right? So I think I am the compound of all of these experiences and I love that because it's hard because sometimes that means I don't belong. I don't feel like I belong anywhere, but that also means I belong everywhere. So any anytime I come here, uh, I know that m m my sense of self is going to change, but also it's just you have more challenges on the day-to-day -day basis and so there's a very different energy here and so I always make sure to remind myself that I'm going to have to go through this anyway even if I'm here just for a week or, or two weeks um, there's a change that happens in me and then I have to readapt so it's, you're always kind of rolling through can you tell me one thing that you find interesting about the life in Lebanon um, yes okay two things my favorite thing is the experience of love that you get in Lebanon. There is a warmth, there is a, f a sort of love you get in the family, and maybe that's just my direct environment, I'm not sure, but there is an understanding of our humanity, our shared humanity, because I think we are a people that has suffered, um, that has lived a lot of trauma, that uh, is struggling on the daily, and while that causes a lot of frustration and a lot of violence, it also kind of humbles us down to our basic humanity and so there is this quick connection that can happen um, and that like an infinite type of love that I've noticed here that I have not experienced anywhere I've been elsewhere in the world so there's that 
And then the second thing that I absolutely love is adaptability and the creativity that comes also, again, unfortunately, with uh, the instability of the country. So this is a country that's stable within its instability. Um, and so this creates kind of a culture of adaptability, creativity, making the best of horrible situations, finding the light, uh, you know, like the finding the humor, finding the, the, the beautiful in all of these difficult situations. And so I feel Lebanon, you could have like a little road that has nothing in it and someone will find a creative venture to create, to, to, to build there, you know. Or in 2006, there was the war, uh, we got bombarded by uh, Israel, a uh, very quick war. And I remember all of a sudden, you know, downtown Jemaze, uh, where we were the first time, um, it all, everything, all the pubs shut down, but the people moved to, to the mountains and the pubs opened there in just a few weeks. And so people were drinking and partying in the mountains while watching the bombs go down. And that's just, I think there's a resilience in Lebanon and, and a love of life that maybe can turn into complacency sometimes, but most of the time it's just, it's phenomenal and it just never ends, yeah. Can you tell me, do you remember why you wanted to be when, when you were, kid. yes? Yes, absolutely, I wanted to be a lawyer. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you remember around what age yeah, you were? Yeah, like four, four or five. Four? Yeah. Uh, you were influenced by your dad? Yeah, so both my parents are lawyers. Um, but I always wanted to, I thought that being a lawyer meant protecting others. And I strongly identified with that. And so I always wanted to be a conduit and a voice for others and a shield. And so um, I think a lot of my childhood was playing that role. So can you tell me the evolution of the interest that you had yeah. when you were four? Yeah. Because obviously you didn't choose to become a lawyer, at least so far. Yes. So can you tell me about the journey that happened after the initial uh, wanting to become a lawyer when you were four? Absolutely. So a few things. First, I was, a, I am a very creative person, but very early on. So I, I would draw, I would sing, um, play a lot of music, uh, lots of visual creative things. Um, but also I started seeing how painful it was for my dad to be a lawyer here in Lebanon. Um, and then about when I was 13, I was just telling you, when I was 13 over on dial-up, I discovered uh, the MIT Open Courseware, and uh, I discovered hacker culture through it. And it was all about transparency and, and rethinking things and, and breaking systems to better understand them, um, questioning all of these conventional thoughts we had, um, and looking for transparency. And I think that really hit a chord for me. And um, and I got quite influenced by that. And so I started looking more, and I knew that the digital age was coming, and I knew that being digitally literate was going to be quite important for me in the future. So I started moving towards that personally, but that, I still wanted very much to be a lawyer. When I turned 18, my father tried to dissuade me from studying law because it was a difficult situation, um, because it meant less, uh, opportunities for movement um, because he didn't want me to stay here I didn't know where to go um, and so I ended up studying computer science and fine arts meanwhile I was an activist um, and I got of course no one wanted me to study computer science because it's not a woman's job um, and I was an activist and people do, my parents my family didn't want me to be an activist because it's dangerous and it's not a woman's job um, but I still did and I got hurt like I mean they had I didn't know how to protect myself properly um, and I fought for all the things that I thought I believed in or I thought I was working with the right people and you learn, you know, um, but I got very into the hacker world, um, very much into freedom of speech, freedom of thought um, and that's where I was driven um, and while I still think every day about going to law school, I think what I care about at this point has become policy. It's about changing, making systemic change, really catalyzing it, understanding that this requires um, mobilization, you know, um, the positive reinforcement, lots of like grassroots approaches. Um, and I don't think 
gaining a knowledge of the law would help me better navigate the system, but it would not teach me how to do all these things that I've learned to do by being on the ground. And so I'm still trying to figure out where to go from there, but I definitely need to be in the social sciences, in policy, in something where I can make a change, where I can affect systemic change, which is something I've worked on quite a bit before during my spare time, but I want better tools to do it. I enjoyed the conversation. Me too. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> For sure.